how exactly was Armin Dietrich born? I actually had a client who said to me, have you ever thought about uh, owning your, or starting your own business? And I was like, no, I really like the fast track to making partner and I'm going to get my BMW and my stock options and I'm not going to, you know, why would I want to worry about starting my own business? And he's like, I think you'd be good about, good for, good at it. And I was like, okay, that's nice. Thanks, whatever. And about four years later, that conversation popped into my brain and I thought, maybe he's right. So I called him and I said, if uh, I go out on my own and start my own business, would you be interested in working with us? And he said, absolutely. Would love to. So I did. And he was um, my first client. And actually, I, it, it wasn't even a business. It was just me. I was freelancing. And pretty soon I needed some help. And so I hired an intern. What exactly do you deal with um, at Armand Dietrich? What do you do and what kind of clients do you have? So we consider ourselves integrated marketing and communication. So we do both marketing and communication. Um, you know, until 2008, we did we were we were a PR firm, and so we did a lot of media relations, publicity, events, and crisis work. And now we've integrated the the marketing piece of things. So we do email and content and search and uh, search engine optimization and search engine marketing. And so we've integrated all of that into um, our. Client work. We work only B two B, and we do manufacturing, financial services, and healthcare. But we do healthcare on the business to business side, not on the consumer side. Right. So, what do you? What would you say is your you know main market share, like B two B or B two C? B two B. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you also curate, of course, the social media part. Right. With social media, you know, people think that, oh, that means I have to get on Twitter and Facebook. And in fact, we don't, we look to see where our clients' prospects, where their customers are already hanging out. And for most of our clients, it's not Twitter and Facebook. Uh, one of the things we're exploring for our clients this year is Google+, Plus, um, not because of the social networking piece of it, but because of the search piece of it. And especially with their announcement a couple of weeks ago about um moving their own their own programs platforms up higher than in search results than you know like a Facebook or a Twitter. So we pay pretty close attention to those kinds of things. We're looking at Pinterest right now um, for clients that have something visual to show. But you know we look at it as an overall strategy, not as you've got to get on Twitter or Facebook or you have to have a YouTube channel or you have to be on Google Plus. We look at it based on where their customers are already hanging out. How can businesses and brands take advantage of the exploding hashtag phenomenon in 2012? Uh, I think it does a couple of things. It really allows you to search things, um, to get smart about things, especially if you're doing business development. If you're looking at a new industry or a new client, a new uh, prospective client, you can actually search the hashtag to see what's being said about the industry, about their competitors, or even about them. And, you know, really, I use the PR and social media hashtags to find topics to blog about. Um, do you at Armin Dietrich actually use any of these to analyze your social network? We don't because we actually have created a proprietary method of analyzing and measuring results um, that we don't share with anybody but clients. Okay, so tell me more about the blog. How was the blog's pin sucks born? At the time, we didn't really know what we were doing. <laughs> it, was, it was disaster. It was terrible. <laughs> Um, but it was a good first step in really understanding what this whole blogging thing was about and how it worked and, you know, how it worked with search engine optimization and content and all those things. And when we started, none of that stuff even existed. You know, SEO was still very meta descriptions and tags and all of that, not content driven at all. And so we've seen a big shift in the last six years in, in blogging and in content. Is we will never recommend something to our clients we haven't tried ourselves because we want to make sure that. A, it has sticking power, and B, is something that's really going to be valuable for them. And with technology changing so quickly and the new tools being introduced so fast, you want to test them out first. What do you think at this point, since there are so many of them, um, what do you think uh, is the thing that makes them or breaks them? I mean, does it have to be uh, something that is super general that anyone can use or very specific? Or what, what do you think it actually makes the success of a, of a good app? You know, I think it really is the addictive nature of it, especially from a social networking perspective, because like with Google+, Plus, it's a great driver of traffic. It's a great search tool, but it's never, it hasn't reached that social networking addiction where you have to get on there every day. 
um, you know, like Twitter does and what Pinterest is doing. Do you think Pinterest or other, you know, there's Storify, there's Semify, even though they're going to discontinue it right now uh, after it's been acquired by Twitter um, and uh, a lot of other stuff like Scoop It. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you think all these tools could actually substitute the blog or is, is it going to be something different? Um, no, I don't think it can substitute the blog. And I, the reason I say that is because blogging specifically is about pro you providing your expertise and your value to customers and to prospective customers. So if you're only curating content from other, other people, you're not going to be able to provide that perspective or your own opinion on things and you lose that credibility as an expert. You get You get uh, services like TripAdvisor, Yelp, um, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. Foursquare does a yep. part of this. So yep. how important is it to be on there? And how, what's the best way to deal with uh, criticism when you get criticism on one of these channels? So it's extremely important to be on there, especially if you have a retail location or if you're a local business. Um, Because if you're not, people are having conversations about your business without you, and you want to make sure that you have your voice in there. You're always going to have people that are critical of the work that you do or the service that you provide or the products that you sell. Uh, that's just human nature. And it's really in how you um, respond that is important. So we always advise clients to respond publicly. So if somebody is saying something negative about them on Yelp or on Facebook or on Foursquare or on Twitter or even in a YouTube video, they need to go to that platform and respond publicly so that people can see that, yes, they do listen, they do care, they're trying to um, work with this person, but then take it offline. So you don't want to have a debate, you don't want to have a conversation with that person who's critical of you online. You want to make sure that people see that you've responded online, but then, you know, an email, a phone call, an in-person meeting, whatever it happens to be, to, to resolve the issue.